Hi, I'm Francis Campoy and this is Just a Funk. So welcome to episode number 41, which since it's just a continuation of episode 40, will not really have an introduction. We will just going to continue building that CSVQL server, which I introduced last week. So if you have not watched that episode, go watch it first and then I'll be here waiting for you. We should be able to see that if we connect to it and we do show tables, we should have now two different tables, cities and people. Cool. So now the next step is going to be uh, to work with the tables to make them actually have content. Okay, so let's see what a schema is, because that's what we're missing, right? When we do describe a table, we should see the list of fields, and that is a schema. Uh, so a schema is indeed a list of columns. That's it. So right now, what we're doing is we're just giving an empty one here. So let's similarly to how we create a new database, let's do func new table. And that new table is going to be given a file, uh, so path string. And it's going to return a SQL.table uh, and an error. And why is this return a SQL.table? Well, uh, why not? I mean, we're going to be storing as a SQL.table anyway, and it's completely uh, private, right? So we can do that. It's not a problem. OK, so let's do this little by little. So new table, what we need to do is we need to read the file. So Let's do, let's actually use the CSV thing that we have, CSV. So I think it's uh, encoding slash CSV. So like encoding.json, but for CSV. CSV new reader. Um, so we're going to do it with a file. So f, e, f, r, uh, os, open of path. If error is not nil, we're going to return errors dot wrap error uh, wrap f probably could not read path uh, return nil and that otherwise defer f dot close. We're going to read from this. That's going to be our reader. And that now we can do reader uh, read, and that's going to return a list of strings, a slice of strings. So that's going to be our headers and an error. Cool. So if the error is not nil, we're going to need to return that error. So errors.wrap f could not read headers in the file. So that is the path and the error. Uh, otherwise, we're going to iterate header over headers and create so uh, columns. Let's call it schema is a slice of SQL dot column pointer to SQL dot column. If I'm not mistaken, let's see what the schema said it was uh, schema is. Yeah, pointer to column. So we're going to create the same thing. We're going to also store it there. Uh, so we're going to do schema equals schema uh, append schema sql.column. And what does go there? So we have the name, it's going to be the header, the type. It's going to be a SQL dot uh, text. Uh, we're going to be using text for all of the types because we don't really, we could try to figure out what type it is. Uh, so for instance, uh, when we see a number, we could say it's a number, but then maybe we have too many, too many people like on the other, all, all the place. So you never know. So just text is safer uh, for this example. Uh, what else? Uh, default. It's going to be, we don't need to say it, I think, uh, just and nullable, we don't need to say it, and source, we don't need to say it, I think. Okay, and then at the end, uh, okay, so that's a typo right there. Uh, but then at the end, we're going to return a new table uh, that's going to have a name, name, schema, schema, and nil. Now, the problem is that schema is, 
uh, oh, pointer to that, sorry. So name is not defined and name should be uh, file path the base of the path uh, strings dot trim suffix of dot csv uh, so that's trim suffix that's going to be the name uh, so that's where our name and our schema and now we need to call this function from somewhere so that's going to be from somewhere in here it's going to be new table and we need to pass so that's going to be file path the join the path and the name which is right there and if error is the nil then return an error um, not return an error uh, yeah actually return an error so it's going to return errors dot wrap could not create table from uh, s uh, that's going to be the name could not create table that's going to be the error errors dot wrap f what is wrong with this uh unexpected return expected expression Re i don't know what you mean um uh, oh because that's like this okay and uh join path name there you go so new table declare and not used Cool, so this should be good. Um, yeah, let's let's try it. So go install first and then CSBQL data. So let's try it again. Uh, describe table series. Cool, so now we have name, country, and population appear as fields in the database because they're fields in the file. And similarly, if we do describe table people see first name last name email and phone number okay the last step is going to be making uh the content available so right now when we connect to uh, our server and if we do select stuff from cities for instance this will actually work which is kind of mind-blowing because we have not done that at all interesting confusing 2000 years later <laughs> okay so I just realized that I was running the wrong one because I was writing the CSVQL binary which is the one I should be calling but by mistake I call this CVSQL because apparently I'm not able to type stuff. Uh, CSVQL, CSVQL, CSVQL. Okay, so now we do this. Now we're gonna be running the actual server and we should have pretty much the same behavior. Uh, so uh, select, so show tables should work and describe table uh, cities should work. And when we do select star from cities, this should not work. Cool, perfect. That is the part we want to work now on because we want to basically be able to iterate inside of the rows, which makes sense. So let's do that. And this should be relatively easy because basically what we're going to do is we want to implement the two methods that we left empty at the end. So uh, for which I added two, long, uh, two extra log lines to make sure that they were actually being executed, which they were not. So that was the problem. So uh, let's see, uh, partitions and partition rows. So partitions, we're gonna need to pass something that uh, we are going to iterate over the partitions and that's gonna give basically how many partitions we have. Rather than thinking about partitions, which will allow you to make things that scale better, I'm not gonna think about partitions, uh, just one partition per table, that's it. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return something, we're gonna need, um, partition eater which is a struct and we're gonna return that all the time so no matter what we're gonna return a partition eater and no error now if we do this of course this is gonna complain because we're missing the close method so 
when someone calls partition either close, which is return nil. Uh, and then we need the next method. And next, it returns a partition and an error. So a SQL dot partition and an error. So partition that has a key, which is a byte. Uh, so type partition, it's going to be just an empty struct that whenever you call partition, you call key on it and returns a slice of bytes. It returns the same slice of bytes all the time. It's going to be this. Uh, just any random, because basically the, the thing is that this is going to be the identifier for partitions, but there's going to be only one. So this we can always use the same key. That's totally fine. Uh, so that's going to return. Um, so this should return once this key and then nothing. So the partition iterator is going to require a Boolean done bool. And uh, so when we do next, it's going to set if p dot done return uh, EOF nil, else p dot done is going to be true. And we're going to return a new partition uh, and nil. Return EOF, sorry, uh, return nil and EOF. So this is to say now it's done. Uh, if not, it's the first time we call it. So we're going to set it to nil, return a partition, and then go back to nil. Cool. So this is to iterate over the partitions. We have only one partition. So now we're able to see how many partitions there are. One. OK, so now to finish, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can iterate over all of the rows. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to path the name of the, the path of the file that we're reading for the table into a row iterator. So let's do that. First things is that we need to remember the path itself. So to do that, we're going to add it to here, path string. And then uh, so we're going to need a new row iterator. And it's going to be an empty struct. No, not an empty struct. Uh, we're going to need uh, the CSV reader. So we're going to be passing line by line. And also, we're going to need the file so we can close it eventually. So uh, we actually could simply do struct embedding. It would just simplify the code a little bit. Uh, so let's do, let's do that. So csv.reader, a pointer, and then ielt.closer. So now, um, in order to satisfy the row iterator, the close method, I don't need to write anymore because I'm already embedding the IELA closer that will contain the file, so that will close the file directly. So we can do row iterator of uh, reader and the file. We will find that later what it actually is. So uh, the file is going to be uh, os.open of uh, t.path if the error is the nil we're going to return nil and errors.rub if error could not open the path uh, t.path otherwise uh, we're not going to do the further close because that will be actually when we call when we call close in the row iterator that will close the uh, the idle closer which will be our file. So that's how it's going to be uh, all connected together. And then we're going to do R is going to be um, CSV dot new reader of F. And that is going to return. And we're going to do read once without keeping the, uh, the return, the thing we return, because we're going to ignore the first row, because that is the headers. And then we're going to return this. Cool. So this should somehow work kind of uh, row iterator. Wait, what's the problem? Oh, because we're missing the next method, of course. So we need to add. Let's add it here. 
func row iterator next is going to return what um, sql.row and an error so uh, in order to do that we're gonna do uh, so r dot read and that is closing the read from the csv dot reader that's gonna give us um, that's gonna give us columns and an error if the error is not nil gonna return nil and errors dot wrap uh, could not read row and then uh, otherwise uh, row is a slice of interfaces so we cannot we cannot simply do return calls and error unfortunately go doesn't allow you to do that because calls even though it's a slice of strings and a string is an empty interface a slice of strings is not a slice of empty interfaces unfortunately so we're gonna need to do a row uh, let's make it with the row and the size already since we know that and then for i call range calls row of i equals call and return row instead okay and that could be correct so let's try it so let's run the server install and run and then connect to it and now we do select star from cities uh, one or more schema sources are empty okay and i actually know why that is um i made an assumption and of course that assumption is pretty wrong which is the fact that we didn't need to give the source in this column so uh, we need to give something so let's try giving the path for instance the path of the file that we're reading kind of makes sense in my opinion okay so uh, let's run it again let's connect again and select from cities could not read row eof and this one is also an interesting error because uh, this is I'm sure that we did uh, too much wrapping so yes this next here uh, could not read row eof you see could not read row eof and it is because we're not supposed to return uh, something that has an eof inside when there's no more rows but we need to return an eof specifically and that is something that unfortunately the, st the standard library is uh, very much designed around it uh, but it's something that it's considered not to be the best pattern nowadays and actually uh, um, dave cheney has a great talk that i will be linking right here so you can check it out uh, definitely recommend it if you are curious about how to make sure that these things don't happen but in this case what we're gonna do is simply do if error is eof then just return the error with a wrapping or anything uh, else uh, else the do that uh, okay so let's try it again go install disconnect connect and there you go now this is working for cities and it is working for people great so this is the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it took pretty long to prepare. Uh, there's a lot of code in here, so make sure that you check out the code itself. Uh, it's on github.com slash campoy slash josephunk. So that way you can read every single step one by one. If you find anything that seems wrong, either in the video or in the code, feel free to comment uh, on the video or send me PRs. Uh, they're always very welcome. Or even file issues. Uh, if you have questions about some specific line of code that, that, that seems wrong, it might be wrong. Anyway, as always, thanks so much for watching and see you all in two weeks.